Uh, I'm David Baldwin, and I taught trumpet at the University of Minnesota School of Music for 44 years. Just retired last May, uh, but I still have a few students this year. And uh, <clears throat> I'll be fully, reti fully retired uh, at the end of this semester. Uh, and I'm Rob Hahn. I'll be asking the questions. Today is Wednesday, January 9th, 2019. And we are at Ale's Breakfast in Dinkatown, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Oh, wow. You came to the U in 74. 74. Yeah. What mm -hmm. was your uh, first yeah. impression when you came to Dinkytown? And what brought you here? Well, you know, I didn't start, uh, <laughs> I didn't start coming here until 78. Um, a colleague of mine, uh, and we had our office just down the street here in the Music Ed building, which is, has been torn down, since been torn down. Uh, and I would, I would pick up Martha Hilly, who taught class piano, and we'd come to Al's. Yeah, it was just really nice to get away from the university area and come here, and uh, it's, a whole, it's a whole world when you come to Al's. So. How would you describe the camaraderie among the regulars, or maybe even the non-regulars here at Al's? Well, now you just interviewed Doug, and every time I walk in, he has a, a fresh insult for me. Uh, I came in, and, and he said, uh, oh, hey, you know, your parole officer was looking for you. So everybody turns. And uh, another time, I came in, and I sat down next to a, a, a girl, a student, <clears throat> and he said, I, I hope you don't mind sitting next to an axe murderer. So that's the, that's the usual. There, there are worse ones that I can't repeat. But. We were talking to Doug a little bit about some of the well-known individuals who have eaten here. Uh, who mm -hmm. are some of the more recognizable figures and names that you recall dining yeah. with during, their, during the years? Yeah. Uh, no, bad question. <laughs> no, I really don't. I, I haven't been here when the famous people have been here. Let's talk about the music element. You actually sure. composed a piece about Elle's Breakfast. Mm -hmm. what, in, what led you to do that? Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, it, it's such an you know, iconic place. And I just thought, uh, yeah, there should, be a, there should be a piece of music uh, based on the situation at Elle's Breakfast. And so, yeah, I, in 1982, I wrote Music for Al's Breakfast. It's a five-movement brass quintet. And uh, we played it many, many times. Uh, we made this a CD. And uh, because of that, uh, I think I may be the only person that has a cup of their own uh, who hasn't worked here. Usually, you have to work here a certain number of years before you get your own cup and uh, it says uh, Professor Lips. Um, how long, uh, out of curiosity, did that take you to compose? Uh, uh, I'd be guessing uh, six months, you know. And so then it, it, was, it was successful enough that I did another one in 84 and a third one in 87. Uh, and then I uh, did a, a concerto for euphonium. Uh, in 92 and so that's that's what's on this CD it's uh, four large pieces for yeah. brass quintet I know the music in some ways should probably speak for itself nonetheless I'll ask you a question uh, and hopefully you can explain if possible what were you trying to capture musically when you were putting these oh, yeah. pieces together as it related to Al's sure uh, I mean the uh, the five movements are all uh, named after uh, usually something at, at the restaurant. Uh, the first movement is, is coffee, uh, question mark. Because that's, you sit down, usually coffee, and uh, so forth. So uh, let's see, one of the movements is uh, here, eat this. It's what Doug would, uh, would say when he threw the food at you. And I, actually on the, uh, yeah, I, I don't think you talked about this, but Doug would very often juggle um, back here, and I have a picture of him on the CD. Uh, he's juggling a, 
uh, a raw egg, uh, a pancake, and a bottle of hot sauce. And uh, so that's, uh, it's always entertaining. Yeah. What was the reaction when you first either performed it or recorded it and shared the recording with people? whether it was Doug or other regulars here. Yeah. Most of them said, is that classical music? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. So it's, it was my attempt to, uh, to write pop-sounding classical music. So we'll, you know, uh, it would be up to somebody else to say how successful I was. <laughs> what keeps you coming back? Oh, the food. Uh, seeing Doug, uh, Allison now is the uh, co-owner, and uh, so yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful atmosphere. I come here at least three, four times a week. Are you a guy who has the same thing off the menu every day, or do you like to rotate it? Yep, I, I almost always have the same thing. And what is it? And that's uh, scrambled eggs with mushrooms and tomatoes and then usually orange juice and coffee. Now, a little bird, birdie told me this story. You can confirm if it's true or not that the, okay. the joke goes, and I may be way off, so that's the, the value of recording something, that um, at some point you had some sort of bypass. And, and the joke was, I think, that moving a little further away from Town to the West Bank, where the music offices are now, might have saved your life. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. I, <clears throat> I like that. It reminds me of the uh, story that uh, because when I fir first came to Al, uh, Al himself would come in sometimes, and I saw Al uh, a number of times come in, uh, and and his uh, he I think he was I know he was in his nineties when he died, and his story was that uh, his longevity was because he never ate at Al's. Uh, uh, but yeah, I did have quadruple heart bypass in 2002. And, uh, you know, they said, well, uh, the surgeon at that time said, well, it's good for, you know, 10 or 12 years. So it's, uh, I'm coming up on my 17th anniversary. And uh, I, I think it's probably because I eat at Al's. Anything about Al's or Town that I'm forgetting to ask that you want to add? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> well, uh, I don't know if you talked about the uh, the books. We that, do not know. Yeah. Now, you can you can see like I don't know a hundred or so of these uh, yellow books. <clears throat> so you can prepay. You can prepay, and then uh, you don't have to bring cash or anything, uh, and they just mark it mark it out of your book. So I came in uh, yesterday and I had just taught a couple of lessons and the, uh, the people paid me with a couple of hundred dollar bills. So I put a hundred dollars on my book. Now I'm good for a few days and they just take it out of the book. 